I mean, if Neo has dysphoria, why does he never appear as a woman? <laughs> 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 what do you think dysphoria is? <laughs> oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> got him. Uh, what were we going to talk about? Oh, yes. We have to talk about something pretty, uh, pretty good. Pretty, let's just say... Uh, let's just say it's, it's some good news. Not Sargon of Cat. Sargon of Cat is, is terrible news, and, and you shouldn't really pay him any mind, and, and he's pretty terrible, but I should pull up the actual news article. Now, as you probably know, The Matrix is written by two sisters, uh, Lara and Lily Wachowski, and uh, they're both fantastic, amazing people. Um, they are very, very big icons for the trans community, obviously. But when I was watching uh, The Matrix, I didn't know when I first saw it that it was actually uh, an allegory to the trans experience. Um, I was more just like, you know, uh, a little bit younger, a little bit more naive when I saw it in, in theaters. And I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. My word, those special effects. The Matrix films are all being transgender, the trilogy's co-director says. That was the original intention, but the world wasn't quite ready, says Lily Wachowski, who came out as trans long, uh, along with her sister, La uh, Lena, after the films came out. Fans have speculated about potential meanings behind the iconic film, and Lily confirmed the theory onto Netflix. I'm glad that it's gotten out, she said. The Matrix first hit screens in 1999. The corporate world wasn't ready for an allegory, a story that could be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning about transgender people. But the director says the films have always been meaningful for trans people. They come up to me and these movies saved my life. I'm grateful. I can be throwing them a rope and help them along their journey. Very cool. I'm glad that people are talking about the movies, um, the Matrix movies uh, with a trans narrative. I love that, so, uh, the, how, um, how meaningful those films are to trans people. And By the way, uh, can, can I just take a second and appreciate this painting in the background that like that is glorious that speaks directly to my aesthetic i would love to have that or something similar on my wall where it's just like uh some dark incredibly descriptive lava flowing you're just like oh endless void mixed in with just this cute little duck in the background like wow wow uh like huge points uh, i i'm sorry I, I didn't know lily lily was like multi-talented i'm grateful that i can be a part throwing them a rope to help them along their journey i'm glad that it has gotten out that um you know that was the original intention but the world wasn't quite ready of at a corporate level the corporate world wasn't ready for it so when you make movies and you uh it's this yeah blue pilling would make more sense too snarky because it's kind of like it's the opposite of the red pill which is the one that the entire right wing affixes themselves to so if you were asking me i would prefer to take the blue pill obviously i mean it's it's too bad for the right wingers because i know they like the idea that whole would you choose the red pill or would you choose the blue pill? And if you take the red pill, well, then we're going to open up the world to what you, you really see. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to gonna go back and enjoy my little duck painting in the background here. I think any kind of art that you put out into the universe, there's a letting go process. Um, you take the blue pill because you're cis. I guess that's true. That's true, Thought Slime. I am cis. I'm born in cis. But, uh, you know, could be worse. Could... It could could be a cis nasbol because that would be that would be pretty shitty. Could be a cis nasbol that talks that talks shit about about gay people. <laughs> that, would, that would be a little little bit worse, you know. I would feel a little bit worse about myself. So uh, I like that that uh, there's like an evolution process that um, we as human beings engage in art in a non-linear way that we can always like talk about something in 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 new ways and in new light we had you know the the matrix stuff nice. was all like good about and good the lip. desire for transformation but it was all coming from a closeted point of view and so we had the character of switch Wait, who was like a piss, character what? who would be you know a man in the real world or and then a woman in the matrix and you know that's both were <laughs> where our heads spin. Okay, so I had heard this as a fan theory for a while ago, actually. 
uh, what Lily was just describing. And again, when it comes to fan theories, it's it's like that's a beautiful notion. I'm actually I'm really excited for this. I, I'd love to learn more. This is this is really neat. And then once the creator basically established this as canon, not only canon, but that this was actually part of what people were supposed to to get. This is the proper way to interpret this. That that to me is is pretty much like now it's codified, all right. Now it's solidified. Now now it's just part of public consciousness. We can't go back and then look upon the Matrix and think otherwise. If you were to do that, you're basically taking away the author's original intent. She does have authorship over the subject. Like that's that should be the the beginning and the end of this, right? Like again, authorship is kind of important. I I don't know how present my transness was in the the back in the in the background of my brain as we were writing it but it it all came so, from the same sort of fire that you're that I'm talking about and because trans people exist in this especially for me and Lana you know we were existing in this space where the words didn't exist Matrix Trilogy? Oh god, the third one is so bad, though. Um, I mean, isn't it fair to say the Matrix is about self-actualization as much as the trans experience? Yeah, but when it comes to what exactly was the allegory of the film supposed to represent, I mean, the author of the film, or I should say the authors of the film, have now decidedly come out and said, yes, this was the purpose, this is why we made this. I mean, all art is interpretive, right? You can look at art, whether it's a film, music, uh, feces, whatever it is, uh, and then afterwards, multiple people will see it, and then they'll interpret it their own way, and that's one of the beautiful things about art, is that... It, the expression it is in the eyes of the, uh, the beholder uh, whoever wants to take meaning if you derive pleasure from something and that's not even its original intent that's also totally valid i mean that's kind of like i mean i'm getting into some philosophy now but this is kind of about the, just the eternal question of what it means to be conscious right anyways let's take it down to a couple notches i'm saying in terms of canon in terms of the intent of the film and in terms of what uh one particular character in this example she's giving switch uh does in the film these are all very very uh predetermined uh, I will say parts of the Matrix canon that they had originally intended, but they are only coming out now and explaining it because, again, as they explained, in 1999, when the original film came out, the world wasn't ready for this. And so that's really a, a demonstration of how much the Overton window has shifted. And again, this is not the Overton window shifting under the, the beauty and wonders of liberalism or capitalism or anything like that. This is the Overton window shifting uh, because of all of you, because of like the actions of people who are fighting every single day to make world a the world a little bit livable at usually a pretty large cost, sometimes human cost. So we were always living in a world of imagination. It's why I gravitated towards science fiction and fantasy and you know play dungeons and dragons it was like it was all about creating worlds and so uh, i think it like it freed us up as filmmakers because we were able to imagine stuff at that time that you didn't necessarily see on screen or even the idea of like how can we exists in as many genres as possible sort of genre bending where you would have stuff that felt like kung fu movies and like anime and westerns and then we always like loved this scene that ned Beatty would do in this movie network where he would talk about the way the world was and it was always from this like corporate hierarchical you know overlord structure and so um I, I think in our transness we are always trying to like in queerness like incorporate as many things as possible it's just like trying to visualize within you know a, a much larger infinite scope of the of the imagination so cool so cool so fantastically based and again uh no real way of misinterpreting any of that now it's it's quite clear because again the the, the creators of the film itself have explained it as in this is what the purpose of our movie was and this is what the meaning is so surely no one's going to be doing an hour and 40 minute stream about why they're wrong i think i might be live i haven't got the chat though <laughs> But I have announced it on Parlor, so you can't uh, you can't come at me for that. What? What? 
Your <laughs> your channel has 340,000 subscribers. Why are you so scuffed? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be live. Fontaine <laughs> is is a little bit hard to tell. I'm looking forward and I don't I don't see you with I'm, I'm on the screen. Oh, do you see me, everyone? Am I am I before you? Are you ready to be charmingly befuddled? Not staying in the comfortable bubble of that which is believed to be true by all because of consensus and actually looking at the hard facts. And, uh, and when you start framing it like that, because that's what it was supposed to be, assuming that it wasn't just another trap that you're in, you know, another simulation after you drop out. Uh, again, the, the, the main question that underlies the Matrix is actually not a new one. It's a very old one. And it really is, how do I know what I know? How do I know what I know is real is real? And the answer is, you don't. <laughs> you are relying on your senses. And if you were, ha if you happen to be like a brain in a vat, and computer electrodes and whatever were connected up to the various sensory receptors in your brain, not the organs themselves, you wouldn't have any senses, but just made your brain think that you had uh, sensory organs and the information that sensory organs was given to you by a computer, you'd think you were operating in the real world, and you'd have no real way to prove it unless you could find what we can, I suppose, term glitches in the matrix like deja vu as a cat walks past twice and things like this um that's why that's why it's such a good film it was a really well packaged view uh, version of that philosophical conundrum and the exploration of what the, you know the the real world could be was really interesting um i noticed the bbc said that they were aliens but no i believe is is that the first time he's ever had that idea uh, explain to him or is that the first time he's ever explored it they were machines and they'd fought you know they'd taken over the world and they were using humans as uh, batteries basically uh, i don't know how feasible that is but you know who cares it doesn't matter it's not it's not you know it's like <laughs> literally anything would work better in terms of the amount of energy necessary to create the creatures and then to maintain them and then to maintain this enormous ai system in which everyone is being plugged into uh, anything would work better you know like a cauliflower a potato or a battery like you know like there's a futurama meme about this so you know it's the it's the it's the thought-provoking nature of the film that's interesting the scientific validity of machines that have enslaved humanity but that was that was why it was so good it was a, a, a good presentation of an old theme that was done really well and it had some really i'm not i'm not like some sort of camera techie guy or anything but it had some amazing action and really innovative camera techniques you'll see the you know the bullet time stuff that the matrix popularized and the kind of aesthetic of it was really different because i mean it was it absolutely was no question and then yes the technology they invented was revolutionary what, what does anything of this have to do with you debunking is the matrix a trans film again an hour and 40 minutes so maybe i'm just gonna pass a little bit to the first have you got my having guessed what he's in channel what used to when you got uh was it 2019 and uh what was this one 2019 but uh, the vulture one i've got here is the first one back in february and given that the both the Wachowski sisters have transitioned, uh, my lawyer tells me I'm legally obligated to use the term. <laughs> what chap? We jumped out my. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you, otherwise, you wouldn't. <laughs> like, what, what? Otherwise, I would just go on into my regularly scheduled bigotry and, uh, you know, just say everything that's coming to my mind. But uh, fortunately, legally, I can't do that right now. No, I'm, I'm joking, by the way. That was, that's not true. Oh, uh, okay. Hilarious. Joking. Hilarious. Um, but yeah, uh, oh, I still... interrupted myself. No, I can't remember what I... <laughs> he's still amused. <laughs> he's still. <laughs> I guess, guess I lost my train of thought with that. That old corker. Yeah, that was that was pretty. That was pretty humorous, wasn't it? We're all still thinking about it, all of us together. You, me, my friends. But anyway, let's let's see what their argument is. Trans. Oh yeah, no, it's not surprising that they're like right. Okay, we're going to have to impose our ideology on the Matrix because we need to essentially welcome these filmmakers into the fold i mean why wouldn't you want prestigious films like the matrix as part of oh i understand it it all makes sense now so say okay here's the thing everybody um 
you're not exactly going to uh, be born into the identity that you are. So you don't know that, all right? So you don't you don't figure that out. And then if you are to transition much later in life, uh, that means that you still didn't exactly know who you were. So it, it means that your ideas change and everything changes. And so uh, clearly, as, as they transitioned uh, into being sisters, uh, I don't say that because my le- uh, lawyer legally tells me to, don't worry about that. Uh, at that point... Uh, that's when they decided to retroactively change the meaning of the film that they wrote, created, and also put uh, indications inside towards the the meaning of all of this uh, pretty blatantly with with an entire character uh, that that explains all this. So, so there's that. Orwell's Tim Pool Maga Beanie. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's why a lot of other people use uh, the red pill, blue pill metaphor. It is a valid one. But uh, trans women have claimed the Matrix as an allegory for gender transition since at least 2012, when Lana Wachowski publicly came out as a trans woman while doing press for the film Cloud Atlas. The symbolism is easy to find. Thomas Anderson's double life. He's a hacker by night, and his chosen name Neo. And his vague but maddening sense that something is off about the world, a splinter in your mind, Morpheus calls it, Neo has dysphoria, and the Matrix is the gender binary. The agents of transphobia, you get it. Right. This is why I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say there's no subtext to it that's not this, but every application of what they're trying to put onto it post hoc just seems kind of desperate. I mean, if Neo has dysphoria, why does he never appear as a woman? (laughs) 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 What do you think dysphoria is? (laughs) Oh, got him. Got him. (laughs) <laughs> Got him, man. Oh, it must be tough. It like it must be tough being the Wachowski sisters and having created this and actually seeing this and being like, oh shit, oh shit, we didn't think about that. Why, why didn't we make Neil a woman the whole time to please those who don't even understand what this story is? Whereas there is like one of the um, I think it's the blonde head woman. One of the one of the uh, you know the npcs who jump into the matrix with them actually apparently does come in as a man and not a woman so like i said there's probably is some trans messaging in there oh nice uh, yeah you're you're coming to the conclusion that the uh, the creator the creator of the the series you're trying to criticize right now actually actually put in there and and described that as, as yes being part of again the the authorship of the situation because she is the author uh, you might want to watch the video where she explains all this instead of reading other articles on the subject, especially ones from 2012, 2019, even like 2018. But why would it? Why would it not actually? I mean, you can't really say Neo has dysphoria if Neo doesn't transition, right? And he seems to be a straight that's, white man. There, there it is. That, that. Yep. That's that's yeah. There. Yeah. That, you, you, you definitely have a, a tenuous grasp on uh, these subjects throughout the entire trilogy it seems to, it seems more that it was about casting him as a jesus style figure doesn't it like a kind of superman <laughs> oh but it can't be both now can it imagine if it was both things oh what if he was both jesus and something else savior for the matrix and it, like in the the other two films which I don't really want to talk about because they were shit. Um, <laughs> on it this definitely we agree. seems that they were, on, they were on more this we going agree. for the Jesus Christ savior metaphor than the metaphor of Neo is trans. Uh, the Matrix is the gender binary. Well, you could frame that. I can I can buy that. You can say that... Um, oh my God. Do you see the shit popping up in his chat? Like this, it just gives you like... <laughs> A little indication as to what exactly he's cultivating. You know, we're, 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 if, if you were adopting the trans position, you could say, well, we're programmed to accept that there are two genders and there can't be anything else. And there's no switching between them. These are hard coded. And there are people with something called gender dysphoria who 
do have uh, a, a problem in this regard. So you could say that that's the case. You that that could be a fair uh, analogization of it. Again, it's not fair to criticize Sargon for what case. his like chat donates. Then I I don't think that would be right. So I'm not putting any of this on Sargon. It's just more like an idea of people who are willing to give you say ten dollars, not in. Like, there is hate donations. I'm not saying people don't get hate donations. I, I'm benefit of the doubt here. I don't think this is one. But when do we get a biological gay and transgender test just to see if people are or are not finally? So, cool. Well, classical positioning. What, what are you hoping to do here? Are you hoping to, to round them up? Do, do you want some kind of eugenics thing? I mean, do, do you want bloodletting? Similar to how we couldn't figure out whether or not someone is or is not uh, ethnically ambiguous. You know, I mean, it's kind of kind of fucked up. But again, I'm not going to put that on, on good old Sargon. All right, let's let's skip past a little while because fuck, does he ever talk about this for a long time? Okay, like, and again, no one cared. These are just okay. These are a bunch of tough bastards from across the world who have you know come together to be a mercenary company and they fight an alien you know that's that's an awesome storyline like shut up with your fucking diversity bollocks tell me more about how the alien kills them he subverted by professional subverters for long enough in the form of postmodern bornistan the virus is now nocturnal so everyone must stay in their homes after 8 p.m if you were caught outside you'll be fined four thousand nine hundred and fifty seven dollars why five grand why not ten grand why not just go for a hundred grand fuck it a million dollars are correct, as in the will gets to decide what the flesh should look like, format. That's why they have to impose it. Automatic. Fuck on. I, I don't want Bill Gates' opinion on anything. He... <laughs> I can't it's actually like, block people for me. It's actually, it's actually kind of fun just randomly dropping into like parts just to see where you'll end. Yeah, so, but if I, if I could, Ig Menez, you'd be getting blocked. How the Matrix universalized a trans experience and helped me accept my own. Wow. Well, some online trans communities have a word for trans people who haven't realized that they're trans yet. Egg. I don't know why, but whenever I hear the word egg, I just think of Stefan Molyneux. Uh, not, not because he doesn't have any hair either. Uh, I, I mean, I, I quite enjoy the egg patrol. <laughs> I think it's really funny. <laughs> because it's, there's really very little that some 30-something feminist singleton can say when someone like Stefan Molyneux just, you know, rattles the empty egg cars in, in, in their direction. Like, there's, there's, a, there's a fundamental truth underlying that. When you're in <laughs> okay, I can't. I can't keep ignoring this. It really looks like he's. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm petty. I but I admit it. All right. That admitting you have a problem is the first. The first part. <laughs> the first step towards recovery. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to use this for. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> To our monarch, Thomas Bow, you are the light that guides our path. To our lords, I'm Rav, Steven, Nine Tails Cosmic Fox, and Hans Josephine. We bow meekly for your pleasure. To our knights of the round table, Josh Mickelson, Dylan Bythe, Alexander Thaler, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Clement Chutscott, Sky Bear Games, Moss Beast, Political Puppy, Alan R, Andres Chitoro, Good Poon hates cops, that's solid Poon then, we salute you. And to all our merchants and farmers, we have our undying loyalty and love.